I am professional wrestler Chris Rex, and if you're hearing my voice, that means you're listening to the Bear of Texas podcast. What is up, my beautiful people? My name is Alex Alcazaz, a.k.a. the Bear of Texas, and this is Into the Net FC, the soccer talk discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, today I have a very, very special subject Quite frankly, this is about a soccer player that nobody knows. She's a female soccer player. She represents the French national women's national team. And she currently plays for the Lady Juventus Club. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to talk about a player by the name of Pauline Perrault-Magnan. A goalkeeper. And quite frankly, after studying some of the film on YouTube of her highlights... I can honestly say that she is an absolute, incredible, talented player. You know, it's a darn shame how I can never have access to watching women's soccer, especially the domestic soccer. Because, you know, God knows how many times I have stood up for not only women's soccer, like the, the domestic clubs, like the women's Chelsea team and all you know all the women the women's soccer overall God knows how how much I've stood up for women's sports and I can honestly remind everybody I've been laughed at I have not been taken seriously from that I mean I mean bottom line is I've stood up for women's sports I continue to do so a lot of people really have have shown me a lot of respect for that but a lot of people have just laughed at me and just kind of tell me Alex you're wasting your time it's not worth it they're just no good you know what for those people who just like to say that the women are just no good, you know what? Go fuck yourself. Because that is absolutely 100% not true. I always say that the the women's, the women's female soccer players are just as awesome and amazingly talented as the men. It's just a damn shame that the, the, the female clubs don't have the sponsorship opportunities and the support and the package deals to be streamed. I mean, it, it's a shame. Because if I, if I could... Uh, whether it's on my phone or on my computer, okay, because, you know, with, with, with the time I have, how I work my own schedule. If I could, if I had access to the Women's Champions League, to Women's Premier League, or the Women's French League 1, Syria, La Liga, etc., I would spend a lot of time watching the games. I watch the highlights every now and then, but really, in my case, I want everything. I want to see the games. It's a shame that, it, that it's a difficult thing. But Pauline Perromania, you know, I only heard, had heard about her uh, three years ago. And Pauline Perromania, she and I have something huge in common. Not a, Okay, yeah, we're both French. That, that's a, She's a French compatriot, yeah. But we actually come from the same hometown. She's from Lyon, just like I am. I'm not entirely sure what part of Lyon, what commune of Lyon she's from. I'm from Villeurbanne. But I see, you know, I, I was uh, studying uh, her youth career, and, and, for, and she started in 2003. She played for, uh, I guess it's a club, you know, called Caluire SC. And I remember Caluire is actually a section of Lyon. So I believe, uh, so that would tell me that I believe that she's from the Caluire commune part of Lyon. And Caluire is actually a place I'm sort of familiar with. I haven't been there in so long, obviously. But, you know, if I talk to my parents about Calvir, I mean, my parents actually remember it very well. But, anyway, and, and I have to apologize because I got caught up again with how uh, I am a very vocal. I'm very vocal and supportive of women's sports, especially women's soccer, and how it, it pisses me off how women's, uh, how uh, women, female soccer players and women, uh, female athletes overall get disrespected like that. I mean, it, it takes me off. I mean... You know, and, I, and I'm going to continue supporting women's sports. I'm going to continue sticking up for them and defending them. And if you want to laugh at me, go right ahead. Because you know what? You can't break me. So anyway, I keep getting carried away. But it was actually, in, again, in 2018 when I uh, first heard of uh, the name. Because I was just looking up on a uh, goal. Uh, I'm sure it was on Twitter. I'm not sure it it might it must have been goal or it was definitely one of the big sources for soccer, and I mentioned how Pauline Perromagnan signed on for the Lady Arsenal team, and previously she was with Lyon, and she was actually, <clears throat> excuse me, she was actually part of the 2018 
a Lyon squad that actually won the Champions League. So it's good that you know she has the Champions League title you know, under her belt. Even though she was the backup goalkeeper, she was the backup to legendary French female goalkeeper Sarah Bouadi. Still, she was part of the team, and you know I'm sure you know she worked so hard you know to stay on the team to keep her spot. So you know what? She's a champion. No matter what you want to say, she's a champion, and she deserves a lot of respect for it. And you know she's like I said, she's incredible. <laughs> But looking at her senior career, and she started with her youth career, like, again, with Calvier, and then she moved to another part uh, called U.S. Montenay, which I believe is somewhere in the Lyon area. I mean, Lyon is just so huge, and I, I've been in Lyon so long. The last time I was in France, ladies and gentlemen, was in 2003, so next time I go to France, I'm, I'm going to have to spend at least a month there because I really need to get caught up with everything there. You know, I really want to go on, on a lengthy... Tri extensive trip to France, but anyway, so she's when she started her, her youth career with the uh, system uh, of Olympique Lyonnais in two thousand five, which went to two thousand eleven. It was in two thousand eleven where she started her senior career with Lyon, and she was there until two thousand fourteen before she moved to a club called uh, EC. I believe EC is actually also part in France. I'm not sure what part of France it's in. Honestly, I'm going to see if I can look that up. I've got the information right here. It's a tea base in ici les Molineux. Okay, so it's actually a suburb of Paris. Okay. Like I said, there's so many, you know, suburbs, so many communes, towns, villages, whatever. It's just almost impossible to actually, <laughs> to actually know them all, all of them off the top of my head. But anyway, so... And then she also goes to uh, that club EC before in tw until 2015. In 2015, she moves to Saint Etienne. Well, she's there until 2016, and then 2016 she moves to Marseille. She's there until 2017, and then she moves to Lyon, which was there winning the Champions League, and then moving to Arsenal, where she had a total of 16 appearances, and then she had a move to Atletico Madrid, had 21 appearances, and lately her move uh, actually last summer. To, this past July, she moved to the Juventus ladies team. So she really has, you know, you know, it's it's, it's really been quite a move, you know, especially you know of the last like six years or so. You know, even before that, you know, having not not very long ten years with with clubs, and you know, she's been moving around, but she's been getting opportunities, and and I'm telling you, man, her skills are just incredible, like. The way she she like the way she runs and makes a stop and makes a save like you know prevents the attack like that that just shows how absolutely fearless she is. I mean, Pauline Peromania is so fearless. I mean, she is super unique in her own way, and her fearlessness is unique. I mean, you can't scare her. She's not scared of anyone or anything. Like she, she's really like she's got that mentality. The way I see it, like she's got that mentality. She really goes far beyond. To challenge again, it's not only the challenge, but she proves a point that she doesn't care who you are. You're gonna have to fight to get the goal, to get the ball in the, in, into the back of the net. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot for you to beat her, and she's not the type to go easy on you. I mean, she will make it more difficult, but you know that's her job. She's a goalkeeper. Goalkeeper's job is to frustrate you know, the opposing attack. But you know, and seeing the highlights, you know. Of her playing for the French national uh, women's team, you know it's the same thing we see, you know, in, in her domestic play. Even though playing domestically and playing in international duty is different, you know she carries on that same mentality. And my my God, I'm just absolutely impressed with Pauline Peromagnon. You no. Know, you know, I'm just such at a loss for words because just how super incredibly talented she is, you know, it's basically the example, if you work hard, if you know your craft, you practice, you work hard, you sacrifice, you know, like that, you become just that kind, of, that, that sort of player. And you get recognized, and in her case, the doors open, the opportunities open. Like I said, she goes from Marseille, Lyon, she plays in Arsenal. Plays Atletico Madrid and now Juventus. I mean, three country, three countries, actually four countries, in a three-year span. Okay, 2017, 2018, she was in Lyon. 2018 to 2020, she was in Ars she was at Arsenal, and then from 2020 to 2021, 
Atletico Madrid, and again, now with Juventus. In, in a lot of things, you know, there's even a video, uh, specifically a game, an international friendly earlier this year against the U.S. women's national team. I mean, even though the, U- the U.S. did win 2 nothing. Pauline Perromagnon just made so many fantastic saves. And like I said, her she really truly showed just how fearless she is. Like, again, like she is not scared of anybody. She will run, jump on the ball, and secure it. I mean, like I said, she has that habit of really frustrating the opposing attack. But again, that's her job. So that being said, not only does she take her job very seriously, but she's damn good at her job. I mean, you can obviously tell that I have nothing but high praise for Pauline Perromagnan. You know, and the fact that, you know, that she's a fellow Lyonnais like me, I mean, that's obviously something really cool. I mean, you know, and obviously, she, you know, like me, you know, she's a, she's a French compatriot of mine, but, I mean, it, it, it's just super incredible. And, as far, and I was doing research, her first appearance, I believe, for the Arsenal ladies team, she actually kept a clean sheet in a 5 nothing win over Liverpool. And that was and that was her first game with Arsenal, so that, that's a way to make the statement. But you know, so as dominant as she is, you know, in her domestic play, you know, for international duty, she's been absolutely incredible, Tina. And, I, and I've dug up to see as many highlights as I can. And goodness gracious, you know, I've already explained already. It's just the same thing: the fearlessness, the skill. You know, it's just you know. The level of how incredible this is, it it seems like she she just gets better and better every day. You know, you know, because in her case, it's not only that she's worked so hard that she takes her job seriously and that she's good at her job. You know, this is what she loves to do. She's proving to the world that she loves being a goalkeeper. This is her dream. This is her passion, and God damn it, she takes it seriously. Now. She was actually on the French squad in the 2019 Women's World Cup, but she was the reserve goalkeeper. Sarah Bouhadi was actually the goalkeeper for France. I believe uh, Sarah was the captain, at least for a few games. But in 2020, uh, she actually made her first debut uh, appearance for the national team in 2019. She only had, she had three appearances. She had seven appearances in 2020, and, and she's had seven this year. So in total, she's at 17. Okay. <clears throat> I read somewhere that apparently Sarah Bouadi has paused her international career because apparently there's some uh, disagreements and there's a some one source mentioned a few that between Bouadi and the current manager of the women's French national team Corinne Diac, who by the was also a former player, a former uh, player for the women's national team, that apparently there was some tension or some disagreements. So I, I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but. You know, Sarah Bouadi, you know, has been around for a long time. You know, a l- lengthy tenure with uh, Olympique Lyonnais and uh, as well with France. So, as far as Bouadi's career goes, I'm not sure where where it goes from here. But Pauline Perromagnan has been, you know, ever since she's been taken over, she's been doing a fantastic job for the French women's national team. You know, and I'm looking at some of the results. You know, the women's uh, the French women's national team. Last uh, month started the World Cup qualifiers for the 2023 uh, FIFA Women's World Cup in a road game against Greece with France won 10 to 0. And looking it up, you know, of course, you know, Pedro Magnan, you know, keeping a clean sheet and everything's going just so well. And France, their uh, second game against Slovenia, France on the, was on the road as well, you know, winning 3 to 2. That was kind of a very difficult game, you know, in that game, you know, lately, you know, also aside from. Um, Pauline P- Perromagnan, a certain player named Marie Antoinette Catoto, has just been absolutely superb for the French national team. So, you know, the the French women's national team, much like the men's, the women's national team has superior talent. is loaded with talent, absolutely loaded with talent. You know, of course, there's Amel Marjorie who also had the, scored the game winning penalty. You know, I was looking at the lineup for this game against. Uh, Slovenia, you know, there's some a couple of new names as well. You know, there's you know, uh, like I said, Marie Antoinette Catoto and all these you know other very names. I mean, there's some newer names or some names I'm just obviously not familiar with. But but this women's French national team is, I mean, it's incredibly talented, and I can really hope that they can 
win the upcoming Women's Euro- European Championship and hopefully win the, the next World Cup. I mean, <clears throat> you know, with all that talent, I mean, they should be able to uh, to win the title. And I'm still looking up if when's the Women's European Championship for soccer because... I know that. Okay, so it's ac- okay. So it's actually going to be next summer. Two thousand. It's actually going to be in the summer of two thousand twenty-two. So we all know the World Cup, the Men's World Cup, is going to be in the fall of next of next year, not in the uh, not in the, the summer how it always is. And the the Women's European Championship is going to be in uh, <clears throat> in England. And okay, yeah. So obviously, I, I would imagine that you know France is one of the favorites. So you know F- France, uh, you know. It has been, you know, going too well. I mean, the, the, their best results in the Women's European Championship are the quarterfinals, and they've been in the quarterfinals, you know, 2009, 2013, and 2017, but, but France really has to find a way to win. I don't, I mean, it's going to be tough, but I, but I know that this women's French national team has superior talent to win the title, to win the European Championship, and hopefully win the, the Women's World Cup. So, anyway, and I am pretty sure that Pauline Perromagnan she absolutely deserves, and yes, I say she not only deserves to be on the squad for the Euro- Women's European Championship, but she should be the starting goalkeeper. No disrespect to Sarah Bouadi. Sarah Bouadi is a legend, and she's a legend. She's incredible. She's a leader, okay? But I think at this point, you know, because I'm not, the future, her future with the national team seems unclear, and the fact that Pauline Perromania has done such a fantastic job. It's not fair to take the opportunity away from Pauline. Pauline deserves respect. Okay, she's worked so hard. Okay, she's done well for the French national team. She deserves to be the starting goalkeeper at the tournament. Okay, and I have no doubt in my mind that Pauline Perromania will be the starting goalkeeper for France in the in next summer's Women's European Championship. Because, like I said, you know, you, you just can't deny it anymore. Pauline Peromagnan has earned it. She has earned her respect. She has proved how amazing she is, okay? Let's give her the opportunity to represent her country in a competitive tournament, okay? Because I believe in her. I have a lot of faith, a lot of confidence in Pauline Peromagnan. I, mean, I guess y'all can just say that, you know, I'm going to start following her career. I mean... It is regrettable that I'm a bit late to the party, but I'm sure some people would say, well, Alex, better late than never. Better late than never. Because I believe that the next Women's European Championship next year will actually be her first major tournament representing France, you know, as the starting goalkeeper. Okay. And, you know, she's been doing great with Juventus, so so her future is bright. So, and, and, and I'm going to be rooting for Pauline Perromagnan. I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna do my best to write about her. You know, you know, I, I'm thinking of this opportunity. If France were to have, were to win the European Championship next summer, and Pauline Perromagnan is the goalkeeper of the tournament, I'm definitely gonna write a, a sole article on on just Pauline Perromagnan, not overall on the French national team, but about Pauline Perromagnan because obviously, you know, everybody can tell based on how this episode's going that I have a lot of respect for her and I'm cheering for her. Not only as a fan, but also as a sports writer, because you know, the fact, like I said, you know, her, her story is just—it's incredible. She's immensely talented. She's fearless. She's unique. She has earned her respect. Okay, and she can do great things if you just give her the opportunity. Because Pauline Perromagnan, that mentality of hers, you can just tell that she will not throw away an opportunity. If you give her an opportunity, she will dedicate herself to giving the best. The best she can. She that's what she does. She does always does the best she can, and she is that damn good. So, and speaking of the women's European Championship, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, so it's gonna be from. It's gonna be in July of next summer. Obviously, yeah, <laughs> ten venues. Obviously, but I'm not sure. So, when the final draw is, the final draw is actually gonna be okay. Oh, okay. The final draw is actually going to be in a few days from now. It's going to be October 28th. It's going to be in Manchester. <laughs> so as I'm looking, I'm guessing the favorites, obviously some, a few of the favorites is obviously England. They're the hosts. I mean, England, much like France, loaded with talent. You know, Ellen Ellen White, the vet, the veteran Ellen White, who's amazing 
Fran Kirby, Fran Kirby, so super amazing and very underrated. I mean, I can honestly say that Fran Kirby is one of my favorite players overall, all time. Fran Kirby is incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, obviously, Germany is all, although Germany did not have a good World Cup. I mean, Germany's kind of fallen back, but, you know, Germany's Germany, even in women's soccer, so you would not count them out. But, but looking at that, obviously, you know, Pot 1 has, you know, Pot 1 has England, Netherlands, and Germany and France, so obviously all those are the favorites. You know, Pot 2, Sweden, Spain, and Norway, and Italy, and Pot 3, Denmark, Belgium, Switzerland, and Austria, Pot 4, Iceland, Russia, Finland, and Northern Ireland. So, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely keep an eye on on, on the. Uh, I'll have to remember. I'll have to remember about the draw. So it's October twenty eighth. Today is the nineteenth. So it's gonna be next Thursday. So I have to keep my eye eye out on it. So there's that right there. But you know, but going back, you know, I'm gonna stick to my guns and say uh, that next year, that in, in that next summer. The starting goalkeeper for the French women's national team, it better be Pauline Perromania because it would be a huge mistake if it, if she's not it. And honestly, quite frankly, it would be extremely disrespectful, and that would actually piss me off. Because, like I said, I don't know how. I mean, I don't care how many times I've said it already. I'll say it one more time. Pauline Perromania has earned her respect, so she needs to be given her respect. Okay, she has proved that she can handle it. Now let's give her the chance. Damn it. She's got this, okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. I am not the only one who has all the faith in her in the world. I'm sure her fellow international teammates ha have the faith in her, and her domestic teammates have all the faith in her as well. Because, like I said, Pauline Pierre has come a long way. Like I said, one more time, super incredible, immensely talented, unique, and fearless. Those are. Great qualifications, okay? Those cannot be ignored. She's incredible. And I can actually say one more time that the future is bright. And by God, you know, I can actually say you know, with everything she's accomplished, Pauline Perromagnon, you know, stayed up and take a bow. You deserve it. You have earned everybody's respect. You know, I, like I said, I just, I just have nothing but praise for her. And, you know, looking at the list of accomplishments... Three, you know, she's won the Women's French League three times. She won the Champions League in 2018. In 2019 with Arsenal, she won the FA Women's Super League Cup. And I believe, uh, and I, I was doing some research as well, she actually also won the, uh, she actually already won a, a title. It seems, according to her Twitter, her Twitter bio, says that she won the, the Super Copa with uh, Juventus. So, you know, she, she's she's already racked up some, uh, you know, some a lot of titles, so, you know, in, into her uh, list of resume. So, I think it's time that, the, I think it's time that we, we see what she could do full-time with the French women's national team. And she's been starting a lot of games for the women's French national team. She's done a good job. So, she's she played in the first two qualifiers. And actually, as a matter of fact, the the French women's national team has two... World Cup qualifiers coming up right now, coming up uh, this week. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, this this Friday they'll they'll play Estonia at home before traveling to take on Kazakhstan. And of course, uh, and I did see her Instagram. You know, she she was selected. You know, there's the you know, picture of her arriving at Clairefontaine. So, so I have no doubt that she's gonna do well. And like I said, one more time, I, I'm 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 sorry, but I gotta say it one more time. But Pauline Perromagnon has a bright future with the French national team and a bright future in soccer overall. And she has more than earned the opportunity to be the starting goalkeeper at not only next summer's European Championship, but at the next World Cup. But France has to qualify first. And I am confident they will do it. And I'm confident that Pauline Perromagnon is going to do a great job. Ladies and gentlemen... Into the Net FC is available to you on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Thank you all very, very much for joining me this evening, and I will see you all next time.